you know, there's been so many jobs that I haven't got, and at the time it felt completely like, you know, it's so so upsetting. But now I'm like, oh, I'm actually grateful, and they weren't right for me, and it meant that I got the ones I did. I have, like you, heard the tall tales told about the Marsh Girl. Hi, Daisy. Hi there. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, I'm going to start by paying you a compliment on your flawless accent in the movie. Oh, thank you. I'm worried my compliment is kind of insignificant because I saw that Reese Witherspoon said that your accent was amazing in the audition. So my first question is, how does it feel knowing that Reese Witherspoon is your biggest fan? <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's, yeah, it's, I'm so relieved that, that the accent was okay. <laughs> and just, yeah, I, I've loved Reese for, a re you know, I've been a fan of her since I was little. So I, just the fact she, you know, knows who I am is, is pretty cool, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> so with the accent, were there like any, were there any words that like you really struggled to like nail with it? Because whenever I jokingly do an accent, there's always like one word which just derails everything. That you can't get, I know. Do you know, I, I was lucky I had an accent coach with me on, on set for it. You know, usually I just work with them before I, I start, but this time we actually had Francie, who, she, who was my accent coach, which was on set so she could run in and be like, it's not quite right. But do you know, on the whole, okay, it was okay. Although I've just noticed that the like headline on the poster is every creature does what it must to survive. And to survive, I found really hard to say. <laughs> and I had to do it for the trailers. So yeah, maybe to survive, I found really difficult, <laughs> weirdly. Just like a day of like ADR yeah, like, saying. To survive. <laughs> I, could, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you smashed it just then. Fantastic work. Um, so Weather Called Ad Sing, obviously it's a, a hugely popular novel. And I read somewhere that it's like now one of the best selling books of all time. Um, did you know that? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. wild. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so what is it about the book and Kaya in particular that, that you think people love so much about it? Well, I think, you know, Kaya as a character, she, you know, she, she goes through quite a remarkable journey. You know, we, we meet her and she's living on her own in the marsh and she and she's on trial for murder. And, you know, she kind of ha has to really sort of survive through quite a lot of hardship. And I think, um, despite the fact that obviously it's quite a remarkable circumstance, she's also a very relatable person, you know, and character because she really does, in the, she's very resilient and she overcomes a lot of hardship, which we do a lot as human beings. And I think we are a very resilient species. So I think perhaps that aspect of her is very, you know, um, people really are drawn to, but also that she's just, she's complicated, you know, she's both resilient and strong, but also very gentle and curious. And she's, you know, a very well-rounded person. And I think, um, I think there's so much about her that people can relate to. And I'm guessing like when you when you play a character like Kaya, there's probably so much like additional pressure seeing how much she means to people. But like, were you aware how much she meant to people before you took on a role? Totally, you know, it's funny, it's, it's an amazing thing to take on a literary character because you're you're on set and you have your character's entire inner life written for you on a book, which is such an incredible you know reference to to go from. But at the same time, it is also, of course, there is an added pressure of knowing that people have realised that character in their head and they'll be very like connected to that version of of the character. And and so you just kind of hope that you can capture the tone of 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 the book and I, I you know and so that people when they watch the film if they've read the book will feel the same way and I, I think the filmmakers have done such an incredible job with this I, th I think that you do you are left with the same feeling you are left with when you finish the book and yeah that's all you could really hope for yeah and like tying it back to like your performance with your audition like was that the sort of feedback you got but like you kind of embodied the character like so well that it was yours well, yeah, it, it, it was funny because my my process of auditioning for Kaya was was very similar to the to the process of uh, of my auditioning for Normal People, which was a, another book adaptation I did two years before. And weirdly, um, so for for Normal People, I auditioned with my friend Bio, and I was filming on a show called War of the Worlds, and I was reading the book whilst auditioning, you know, like on a spaceship because it was sci-fi. <laughs> and then a year later, I was auditioning for Crawdads. Um, on a spaceship, like reading the book on a spaceship again, because I was doing the second season and Bio played Tate and Chase. And so I, I honestly owe my entire career to Bio, <laughs> to my best friend Bio, so shout out to Bio, he's amazing. So yeah, it was kind of really cyclical, but um, but no, I, I felt very good after doing that audition. I, I really um, I really connected with Kyra and I felt like I kind of understood it and in with her and, and I knew how I wanted to try and bring her to life. So yeah, it was a really fun audition actually. 
I'll be honest, I, when I asked you that question, I wasn't expecting you to say that you auditioned on a spaceship. <laughs> well, I read the book on a spaceship. Got it you. would be weird to do my self-tape sat on a spaceship, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know if that would have been an... That would have been amazing. <laughs> that would have, it definitely would have caught their attention, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so this is quite a deep question, just to, just to prepare you. Um, in the movie, Kaya is left to fend for herself at a very young age, uh, and so her destiny and fate is very much in her own hands. Mm -hmm. um, are fate and destiny something that you believe in yourself? I think, I think, I, I guess so in a way, but I also think you can be an agent of your own fate too. So uh, a bit of a mixture of the two. But I do believe, um, you know, I do believe what's for you won't pass you by. Like if I look at the, you know, there's been so many jobs that I haven't got and at the time it felt completely like, you know, it's so, so upsetting, but now I'm like, oh, I'm actually grateful and they weren't right for me and it meant that I got the ones I did. So yeah. I guess in the job I do, it does feel, there's so many sliding doors <laughs> moments of just like, opportunities that come and you just don't expect and so so yes a little bit but I do also think you can sort of maybe create your own fate too yeah well what an answer yeah I mean I was I, I wanted to ask you that as well because like with your career in particular normal people blew up at a time where everyone was like watching tv because they couldn't do anything else and then like uh this book comes out what five six years ago yeah. and a movie about it comes out and you're perfect for it because normal people's blown up. It just everything for your career, it just feels like everything's like moving so like perfectly timed. Do you know what I mean? I do. I, I yeah, and I think you know with with the with with normal people, it was a very sort of intimate story and very a quiet one. And I think it was probably the backdrop of of the time period in which we were watching it, of us all kind of being indoors and being super aware of the human connections in our life and the fact we couldn't see each other and couldn't, you know, hug and connect. And yeah. and I think, therefore, that story, which is all about, you know, the, the people that enter your life and fundamentally change it, um, you know, I think it probably weirdly meant that it resonated in, a, in perhaps a more sort of uh, potent way, I guess would be how I'd describe it. And then, yeah, I guess, yes. And, and because of that show coming out, it meant that um, the people behind Crawdads had seen my work. And, and so, yeah, I feel very lucky that, yeah. you know, it meant that I was able to audition for this, you know. I love that sort of like uh, chronology. Chron chronology? That's yeah. the word, isn't it? Yeah, I just. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> that got very deep, so let's have a fun question. Um, so, a big part of Kaya taking hold of her own destiny is by publishing her own book. Uh, so, I have to ask you, what would the name of your autobiography be if it was released right now, today? A Daisy Chain of Events. Fist bump. <laughs> That's amazing. I get really proud of that, yeah. <laughs> and it links in perfectly. It does. <laughs> oh, I should leave. <laughs> I've got two more questions. What would yours be? Well, I've just turned 30, so I don't know about the, the name of the book, but it would be chapter 30, The Chubby Years. Because <laughs> I'm putting on weight quickly. Like, I never really had to worry about it before. <laughs> that was brilliant. Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> I mean, both bestsellers. Um, so, I love that Tate in the movie, he reappears in the story uh, just when Kaya needs him the most. Uh, but who has been the one co-star of yours who's always been there for you when you when you needed them? Gosh, well, I've been so lucky. I, you know, I've, I've been working since I was about 17 and every job I've done, I've, I've, I've made a real friend for life. So, my, my friend Ella, she, she played my twin in Cold Feet when I was 17 and, you know, she's still one of my closest friends and, and Sylvie. And, you know, I, I have so many, and Baya who, you know, was both um, Connell, Chase and Tate in my auditions, you know. But I think, you know, Paul, like, for, for Paul, obviously, he played um, Connell in Normal People. He, he just, um, yeah, he's one of my best, best friends. And we, we, we really sort of, um, you know, that was for us both a, our first real lead. So I think, um, yeah, he'll, he'll always be someone who will be very, very oh. special to me, yeah. That's amazing. I was kind of hoping you'd say Paul. <laughs> yes! <laughs> but also Harris and Taylor as well. You know, I've, you know everyone I've worked with is been really lovely. Oh, amazing. Um, and so finally, uh, Reese is obviously a producer on the movie, um, and I imagine you work quite closely with her, especially at the start with like auditioning and stuff. Um, so what was the best piece of advice that Reese gave you whilst you were working on the movie together? Well, yeah, it was so cool to meet Reese. You know, I, I've been a fan of her for a very long time, and, and it was really cool because she came and visited us on set, and, you know, just seeing her sort of take in the, the incredible sort of set that they'd they built Kaya's shack on this incredible lagoon and it was exactly how I imagined it in the book so seeing her see it was really cool but really she just she's so intelligent and you know she you know with her production company she really wants to put complex women at the forefront of her stories and I, I really admire that and you know everyone that worked behind the camera was predominantly uh, female in lead positions and that was really you know rare unfortunately to see but I hope not so the case in, in the future you know that there's representation in every way behind the camera so 
yeah, it was just really cool to meet her and she was so kind and, and just really encouraging and just, I think, her, you know, she knows what it feels like to be in front of the camera, so the idea of just trying to enjoy yourself is a really good piece of advice. I love that. Yeah, and who better to get it from than Reese Witherspoon? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time. This has been so lovely. Thank you. Nice um, to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Stone Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone Viral.